Now, in a world of carries, I was always the Miranda, which <laughs> has never been a problem for our next guest. As one quarter of the iconic Sex and the City foursome, Kristen Davis became one of the most recognisable actors in the world. This is pretty. Oh, she'll hate that. Too domestic. Well, maybe we should just buy her a stapler and wrap it in brown paper and just smear some dog poo on it. Playing Charlotte York over six years and two movies, Kristen picked up SAG awards and Emmy nominations before acting on The West End and moving into film. I can't tell you how much I need this. Oh, I love pleasuring people. So do I. My husband, Scott, is just like a cat. Scott? My husband. Recent times have seen Kristen travelling the developing world with the UNHCR, something Charlotte would be pretty impressed by. Would you please welcome Kristen Davis? <laughs> the work you're doing. Thank As we just you. mentioned, there, you just returned from the Democratic Republic of Congo, mm -hmm. from Uganda. Mm -hmm. An incredible trip, I imagine. What was sort of the things that you learned along the way that surprised you the most? I think the most surprising thing is the resiliency that you see amongst the refugees. You know, even in the middle of a camp where people have just arrived and, and you know, they, they need water and food, the, the kind of joy at the fact that they're at a safe place where they know that their children will be fed and will be safe and kind of the resilience they're ready to get to work they're sweeping the you know floors of their tents I mean they're just so impressive to me the fact that they go through these things that would like probably floor any of the rest of us and they're ready to get back up and work and I think it's one of the biggest misconceptions as well that somehow they're destitute and, and unable to function. In, in reality, they're they're incredibly inspired to function and get their children an education and find a job if they can, if they're in a country that will allow it. And, you know, there's really a, a resource there because they're so committed to making it work. Or that they're somehow trying to cheat and, that you know, they're not hard-working people. Right, who, exactly, yeah. right. But it's interesting. It's really important work that you're doing, but I imagine Thank it you. must be hard because it feels to me anyway like... It, it, there has barely really been a time that the refugee convention has mattered less you know, I, it's being ignored yes, more I know I know what you're saying and I, I think it's partly because the crisis is so large you know having 60 million displaced people in the world is an unprecedented mm. number we've never been in this situation before so every country is having to struggle with their own issues and try to figure out how to handle it but at the same time from a kind of moral ethical standpoint to to me after having been there and seeing them we we need to take care of these people. We need to help those children get educated if we want to change the world. Because if we don't take care of them, there are other people who don't have necessarily good intentions who oh, yeah. are there because mm -hmm. they're vulnerable people. How, how, how hard is it to see these children then to leave and not just want to bundle them all up I think about them all. Absolutely. I think about them all. Um, luckily, you can often check back. You know, we have people with the UNHCR who are, who are there, and I can check back. Like, we met a baby who was four days old named Angel. You know, we checked back. We made sure she got a mattress. We went and got her some extra supplies for her mother. You know, things like that where you see these, you just can't believe what they've been through. And, you know, then we get reports back that they're fine. And with Sister Angelique, she has about 35 orphans that she's taking care of. And kind of one room with women who are all at also working at the bakery and you know we check back on them and we send donations and you know we ask like there's a picture of me holding a baby and that's one of those orphans and she she they heard um sister angelique's voice and they all walked out and started saying mama mama and grabbed her legs oh. and she's a nun she's yeah. not their mother you know yeah. but they love her and yeah. and one of them just looked so tired and so i picked her up and she just passed out on my shoulder oh, so i just sat and held her oh. while sister angelique did the interviews and did the work and you know it was a joy to be able to help but then of course you think about them every night I think about them yeah I yeah. bet absolutely that's why I'm here to talk <laughs> about them tell um, you all what yeah, I saw you, you bring your profile to, to raise awareness about the children do you think it's a little bit of a shame though that we had you know, you know it takes a celebrity before people start to notice a cause like this oh I mean a shame it's hard for me to say that because it is what it is you know I'm just lucky that I get to do it yep. from my from my point of view because fame in and of itself is not um, necessarily a rewarding thing. It's fantastic to get to do what you love to do in life and be an actress and have some success. But at a certain point, you're like, oh, God, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. So for me, it really helped me to think, oh, you know what? I can actually do some good with this. This mm. is useful. I can talk mm. to people. I can get to meet people. I can go into situations around the world and get to see things that I would never have gotten to and see. Well done, Andrea. Thank yeah. you. So, so I feel honored.
Yeah. Well, Either Chris, way. This is usually the point of the show where we get the wigs out and do a, a little <laughs> recreation. But somebody, somebody stole our idea this morning, Chris. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I confess, though, you made me cry in a Sex in the City movie. I'm That's sorry. It. It's the point where you yell at Big. Yes. And that made me cry. That's I'm, fascinating, have you, Peter. Have you met a man who's cried no. at that scene? No, I've not, not admitted it. I've not admitted it. Now, why did it make you cry? It's a rival. What I'm very this? fascinated. It was real. I was very, very angry. I, that is real. I, I hate to say we have to cut you off. We could chat all night, but we are three seconds before the end of the show. Thank you oh, so no. much for being here. <laughs>